Right, big game on Thursday night. Celtic at home to the side from the Czech Republic, Sparta Prague. Our third game in the Europa League. It's an 8pm kickoff at Celtic Park. And it is, if we're all honest, a must win for Neil Lennon's men. If we've got any hopes of making it to the last 32 of the Europa League, like we have in each of the last three seasons, we really need to get some sort of victory. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a tough game. and um, That kind of goes without saying at European level. Sparta Prague are the best team in Czech Republic at the moment. They sit top of the Czech top flight. They're the only team in the Czech Republic with a 100% winning record. They've won all six of the league matches so far. However, that last league match they played is pretty much a month ago now. Uh, the last couple of games have both been in the Europa League, which tells you that they've not played domestic football in a long, long time. In this video today, I'm going to go into a bit of depth into why that is the case, what's going on in the Czech Republic, both on and off the pitch, and um, how that could feed into Thursday night's game at Celtic Park. Before I do all that, I'm going to put out my usual shout for anyone watching this channel, this video that's not yet managed to subscribe. We would massively appreciate it. The channel is going from strength to strength. Last month, we had another record-breaking month. Loads and loads of hits. Thousands more than we'd ever had before. And it's all down to you guys and girls. And to be honest, a lot of it is down to Rangers fans or other fans of teams um, who have come to gloat when Celtic have been struggling. We appreciate all the views, but I'm mainly talking to the Celtic fans right now. If you're watching this video and you've not yet managed to subscribe to the channel, I personally would really appreciate you doing so. It would help me out with my boss. I've said that all before. We've got live match reactions with me, John McGinley, David Walton. We've got solo videos like this with just me and my green screen behind me. We've got Jackie McNamara on as a regular guest. We get two videos a week from Jackie hearing his views on the current Celtic team and also historical matters that he was involved in. Loads and loads on the channel. Click subscribe, click the alarm bell, allow notifications so you can get notified every single time we post a video. You'll be happy, I'll be happy, everyone will be happy. So what is going on in the Czech Republic? Well, they've got some of the highest cases in Europe in that country at the moment. In terms of EU countries, it is top of the table, a table that no one would want to be top of. They've had more deaths per 100,000 people in that country than any other EU country um, at the moment. So it's right at the top in terms of um, the worst hit countries in Europe by COVID-19. That meant that the middle of last month, start kind of middle of October, the Czech government decided to cancel all competitive top level sport. Now in Czech Republic, the two main sports are of course football and also ice hockey. Um, however, there are other sports in there as well. The only kind of half decent event that's been held in the country over the last month was a WTA women's tennis event. Uh, that took place in Ostrava. There's also a European Judo Championships, you may already have known that, but probably not, that takes place later this month. And just to give you an idea of how Britain is viewing the Czech Republic at present, the British team uh, of judo athletes, I think you call them, have withdrawn from that. So obviously Celtic are going to go there in a couple of weeks, three weeks I think it is actually in Czech Republic, um, given that the British judo team aren't travelling at all to a European Championship, so you know, a major event for them, um, it does kind of make you feel a little bit uneasy about Celtic going out there. But yeah, it's um, been badly hit, the country. They're getting roughly, in the last week or so, they've had about 12,000 new cases per day, which for a country of just shy of 11 million is absolutely astronomical figures. The good news is that they seem to be getting a little bit of a handle on it now. Um, the cases are kind of levelling off a little bit and that has persuaded the sports minister on Monday, so the day before I'm recording this, to announce that top level sport will return after a three week break um, in the coming days and weeks, I presume. So it's all positive in terms of that. They're only the up now, but what it's meant for our opponents on Thursday is that they've not played a full domestic competitive match since the 3rd of October. So it is a month since they played a domestic game. They have had Europa League games since then. They lost 4-1 in their opener at home to Lille. I was kind of a bit surprised that they were allowed to play that game in the Czech Republic given the restrictions that were in place. 
They then went away to AC Milan in match day two and lost 3 0, so it's been two heavy defeats. They're not the only Czech team in the Europa League this season. The rivals Slavia Prague and also Slovan Liberec are also in the competition. And the captains of all three teams, including Sparta's player Boric Dokal, um, wrote to the Prime Minister recently asking him to reverse a decision to see sense and to allow top-level sport to resume in the country. So maybe that was one of the reasons for the government changing their decision and re-allowing sport, or maybe it was more likely to be the fact that cases are now coming a little bit more under control. When I mentioned the two other Europa League teams, it is important to say that both of them have already registered wins. Uh, Slavia Prague actually beat Bayer Leverkusen last week, so if Sparta want to use their early results in the Europa League um, and excuse them by mentioning the fact that they've not had competitive football domestically, then it's probably a bit of an ill-judged thing to do, given that the other two teams have actually done quite well and already have wins. So Celtic are going to be facing a team on Thursday night that have played precious little football over the last month. Two games, no domestic football at all. That doesn't mean that it's a gimme in any way for us. I think it's still going to be a tough game, even in Glasgow and in the Czech Republic a few weeks later. But if we've got hopes of making it to the last 32 of the Europa League, it really is a game that we've simply got to take maximum points from. I was really you know, optimistic after watching the game on Sunday. I thought we were much better in the first half. Um, and I think there's lots more to come from this Celtic team as well. So I think it's almost the ideal fixture. Thursday night, Celtic Park. Yes, I know there won't be any fans there, but it's still a home game and a real opportunity to set down a marker. You know, the next two match days are going to see the top two teams in the group at the moment, Leo and AC Milan, going head to head. So if we can take maximum points from these next two games, we will give ourselves a really, really good chance going into the last couple of matches in the group. It's going to be difficult. They've got a few players. They've also got a few players injured um, as well, which is good news for us. I think they're missing two or three members of their back three that usually play games. So hopefully we can exploit that. However, our defence hasn't been great either um, over the last month or so. So it could be a game filled with goals. But every time I seem to say that, it usually finishes 1-1 or 1-0 or 0-0, something like that. So I'm looking forward to it massively. Big opportunity for us, given their current situation, to go and get a victory and really move through the gears. I think winning a European game could be absolutely massive for this team. Um, there's something about winning at Europa League level in the group stage that says, you know, we're a good side and we can build on this. And I think it would give us, you know, a real shot in the arm going into that final game of this chunk at Motherwell on Sunday and then into the international break after that. So lots and lots to be excited about from a Celtic point of view. Goes without saying, we will be back on Thursday night with the live post-match reaction. I think I'm going to have David Walton alongside me. We're also back tomorrow on the channel. We've got another video with Jackie McNamara. Me, John and Jackie are going to be chatting about Celtic's brilliant front four that started the game on Sunday against Aberdeen. And we're going to be paying particular attention to a certain wizard from Australia. So... Stay tuned for that. Remember, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please do that. We'll massively appreciate it and we'll speak to you soon.